All right, welcome to our scene on mycoplasma pneumonia. Represented by this mic over here, this microphone, that was dipped into some sort of plasma. In the jail cell, the guards take microphones and they stick it into each jail cell wall. So this mic with the plasma on it reminds us of mycoplasma. In this scene, we're talking about mycoplasma pneumonia. And the reason why this scene is taking place in a jail cell specifically is because infection by mycoplasma pneumonia often occurs in prisoners, as well as in college students and military recruits, where individuals live in close contact, and actually frequently affects young individuals in these areas. And that's why the prisoner in this scene over here is on the younger side, to remind us that infection frequently occurs in younger individuals, specifically those under the age of 30. Now it is quite apropos that mycoplasma pneumonia is called mycoplasma pneumonia because it causes pneumonia and specifically a walking pneumonia and that's why we have a picture of this walking gnome over here. Walking gnome for walking pneumonia also known as atypical pneumonia. A condition characterized by a fever, headache and a non-productive cough. Now let's take a closer look at this prisoner over here. We see that he is coughing. <coughs> Again which reminds us of the non-productive cough. But more importantly, we take a look at his chest over here, where we see a chest x-ray of a patient with mycoplasma pneumonia infection. This is described as a patchy diffuse interstitial infiltrate on CXR, chest x-ray. Now it's an interesting fact that the CXR looks worse than the patient's presentation would actually suggest. And over here, we have an image of what the macular rash in a patient would look like. If we look under this walking gnome over here, we see this random piece of furniture with a picture of what mycoplasma pneumonia looks like. As we can see, it doesn't have such a defined shape. It is often described as pleomorphic. Prisoner over here wrote a few words on the wall. Eatonum sterols makes me stable. Eaton reminds us that mycoplasma pneumonia is grown on an Eaton agar. And sterols makes me stable reminds us that the sterols in the cell membrane of mycoplasma pneumonia gives the bacteria stability. And that's really important, because in fact, mycoplasma pneumonia does not contain a cell wall. And that's easy to remember, because this jail cell over here doesn't really have any walls. I mean, it has one in the back over here. But on the left side and the right side of the prisoner, there are no walls. Again, this reminds us that mycoplasma pneumonia, as opposed to most other bacteria, contains no cell wall, and therefore cannot be stained in gram staining. This is also why penicillin is not effective against mycoplasma pneumonia. Again, because it has no cell wall. Now let's take a look at this bed over here. We see the cold IgMs on the bed over here. Each of these represents an IgM, and they are cold. This reminds us of the cold agglutinins, that is, the IgM antibodies. These are called cold agglutinins because they agglutinate red blood cells under cold temperatures. This occurs because there's a similarity between the antigens in mycoplasma and red blood cell membranes. So the agglutination of the red blood cells is represented by these red blood cells that are clustered together on the mattress of this bed. And these explosions over here remind us of the hemolytic anemia, that mycoplasma pneumonia can cause hemolytic anemia after complements mediated attack of red blood cells with bound IgM. Now this prisoner over here is being visited by a friend, Larry Johnson. I guess he broke out of another jail cell. Larry Johnson, or Johnson, reminds us of Stevens Johnson syndrome, that mycoplasma pneumonia can cause an atypical variant of Stevens Johnson syndrome. All right, now let's talk about treatment. So as we mentioned, penicillin won't be effective against mycoplasma pneumonia because it contains no cell wall. What is it treated with? The crow over here reminds us of macrolides. The cycle reminds us of doxycycline. And the flowers remind us of fluoroquinolones. Macrolides, doxycycline, and fluoroquinolones are effective against mycoplasma pneumonia. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this scene of mycoplasma pneumonia. Take care.